Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here, coming at you with Ezra chapter 10, and this is not so much a follow-up as to the message yesterday, but it is definitely in reference to the problem of several of the Levites, leaders, priests, and other of the Jews in general having taken unto themselves pagan wives. So yesterday's message, it was a bit on the long side, I think it was over nine minutes. Sometimes they tend to be a little bit long-winded, but I'm try not to add fluff or filler. I'm simply trying to get across whatever point it is that I feel the Lord has put on my heart for that day. So to anyone and everyone who is watching these messages in their entirety, thank you so much. Um, I'm going to assume that they are worth your time if you're watching them in full and that you are genuinely interested in that. The, I, right now, it's not very big, but the thought of that happening at least one day makes my heart quite happy. On to... Ezra chapter 10, I was about to say Nehemiah because that's the next book, but Ezra chapter 10 starting at verse 1. Now while Ezra was praying and while he was confessing, weeping, and bowing down before the house of God, a very large assembly of men, women, and children gathered to him from Israel, for the people wept very bitterly. And Shechaniah the son of Jehiel, one of the sons of Elam, spoke up and said to Ezra, We have trespassed against our God and have taken pagan wives from the peoples of the land. Yet now there is hope in Israel in spite of this. Now therefore let us make a covenant with our God to put away all these wives and those who have been born to them, according to the advice of my master and of those who tremble at the commandment of our God. And let it be done according to the law. Arise, for this matter is your responsibility. We also are with you. Be of good courage and do it. I actually take issue with some of the things that are said here. And the very fact that I'm doing that is kind of enough to make some people go, wait, what? You're, you're questioning the Bible? I'm not questioning the historical fact that this conversation took place and that they indeed followed up on these actions as is described in the latter parts and the rest of chapter 10. I'm not disputing that. I'm not disputing the fact that it should be in the Bible or the fact that it is accurate and true historically. Not disputing those things. It's the Bible. I am disputing whether or not what Shechaniah, the son of Jehiel, one of the sons of Elam, what he advised Ezra to do. I don't, I don't track exactly with everything that he said. Uh, first off, down in verse 3, near the end of it, he says, Let it be done according to the law. According to the law, if anyone married someone who was not of Jewish descent, um, and someone who worshipped pagan gods, someone who wasn't actually a follower of Yahweh, that person was to, and I forget off the top of my head, but they were either to be banished or they were to be killed, one of the two. Very severe consequences, both of them. And so, strictly speaking, the law was not being fulfilled here. It wasn't. They weren't kicking these people out of out of the new Jewish community, and out of the new Jerusalem and Israel. They were allowing them to stay if they repented of this sin, if they made it right, so to speak. But that's still not exactly according to the law. It's kind of like when David and his men partook of the holy bread. Yeah, they were clean at the time. They hadn't um, slept with their wives within the past several days. That didn't make them priests or Levites. Um, and yes, the holy bread wasn't, um, you know, it was yesterday's bread, it wasn't the recent current day's bread, and Jesus himself had no problem with this. Um, and I offhand don't take an issue with what they decided to do here, but if they want to do it according to the law, they're kind of pulling a David, they're not doing it exactly. I do think that part was within the heart of the law. If these women had no interest in Yahweh, then divorce them. And now I know I understand very well that divorce works differently in New Testament times and in modern day culture. I'm not referencing that and that is an entirely different message. But the decision to divorce the wives at that time under Old Testament law, I don't disagree with that decision. If they weren't willing to worship Yahweh and they were going to be trying to pull their men away from God, put them away. God's more important. I can get behind that and I can agree to that. But it's still not being done according to the law, not the strictest letter of the law. It's more of a, we're going to follow after the, the heart of the law, what the law's intent is. And that can be, under a lot of circumstances, a slippery slope. 
So to that extent, I take issue with that. Another thing I take issue with, um, earlier on in verse 3, not only putting away the wives, but those who have been born to them. Um, I know depending on the age, you know, certain children are a bit set in their ways. Sometimes they end up preferring one parent over another. Um, and very young, people can certainly develop their own belief systems. But I'm, all, I'm thinking of the very, very young, like, you know, four and under. Most of the time, majority of the time, those very little ones haven't, and they're not even able to form a right and just opinion on anything. They simply take at face value whatever their mother and father says. Usually, several years past that. Should those children be kicked away, or I guess kicked away, put away with the wives? Shouldn't those children, male or female, rather be kept by the Jews and raised in the proper fear of God? Especially if we're especially if we're speaking in the matter of men putting away their wives. The men held a lot, if not all, the power of the home back in that time. So keeping the children, I'm assuming this because I don't know culturally exactly how this worked, but it seems to me a no-brainer that the man, if, they, if he put away his wife, would keep the children or do with the children whatever he pleased. Why put away... Yes, the blood is mixed, but why put away a child when the child can still worship Yahweh? I completely disagree with that. I don't think that was a good move at all. I, I am in no way, shape, or form in agreement with that. Um, if they're going to do things not according exactly to the letter of the law, but according to the heart of the law, then how about we follow the part of the law that says it's your responsibility to raise your children in the fear and admonition of the Lord. That's not just New Testament. That is Old Testament as well. It should be in the book of Deuteronomy somewhere. Education is primarily the parent's responsibility. And to raise them in the fear of Yahweh is the parent's responsibility. If we're following the heart of the law, how about you keep the children who had, they're not God, they're not godly or ungodly. They don't know anything to do except for what you tell them. So you keep them and tell them, hey, Yahweh's God. Follow him. Okay, Daddy. So I completely disagree with that. So maybe I'm missing several cultural, con contextual things here. Of course, that's entirely possible. I don't know everything. But, yeah, I just wanted to put it out there. I can disagree with some of the decisions some of the biblical leaders made. They, they were humans. They were fallible. I believe this historically happened. I believe the Bible's account of this story is true and right. I do not think they made an entirely correct decision in this matter. The problem of having pagan wives needed to be addressed. They were moving from Babylon back to their homeland. Issues were bound to arise, and they were trying to handle it the very best they could. Kind of like during the time of um, Hezekiah, the king of Judah, when not all of the priests were clean, and so they weren't able to minister before the Lord because of their uncleanness. So he was like, you know... Just, you know, God forgive us, we're going to do this because we love you and we haven't done this in a long time. Things aren't the way they should, but we're going we're gonna to do the best with what we, what we have, and God accepted it. So, yeah, I don't think they made the exact right call there. So guys, what do you think? What's your opinion on this? Am I missing something? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, thank you very much for watching this video. I love you, and God bless.